Welcome back to Black Swan Outdoors, and today we are going to talk about some antenna options for the Baofeng UV5R radio. So we've talked about how to use the radio, we've talked about some different clandestine setups, we've talked a little bit about radio antennas before, but I want to talk specifically about a couple different types and some things to think about as you're looking to uh, use your radio. So most radios are going to come standard um, with a rubber duck uh, antenna, something like this, maybe a little bit shorter. Um, and these are fine. They do okay. Um, it's a compromise in terms of, you know, the size of their packaging and, um, and expense that they want to put in there. But oftentimes when you get the radio, to get some more functionality out of it, you're going to want something a little bit larger to get a little bit more uh, coverage. And in that case, a whip antenna is going to work well. And so these are called whip antennas because they're long and they look like whips. Um, alternatively, you could look for like a telescoping radio antenna. Um, those were very common a, f a few years ago, not so much anymore. Um, I think what's pretty much taken place of those are the, um, for lack of a better word, I call them tape measure style radios. Um, they're the foldable radios. Um, they're often made from a tape measure, um, and then you put a, a sleeve over it, a black sleeve. Um, they're very common in kind of the, the tactical and paintball um, communities. Uh, so um, that, that would be another option. These, to me, just seem to be just as effective um, and are a little bit more rugged. Um, but that's just me. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you've got some good good feedback on those. I might, I might try it out eventually. Uh, for those that would look into travel with your radio, um, then certainly having some additional radios, antennas are going to be important. Um, you know, you could go with a, a magnetic mounted radio for your vehicle. And the advantage of this primarily, it's, it's not that much different than the whip antenna in terms of size and a function. But it's outside of the rate of outside of the the car. So as it's radiating, it's not being the signals aren't being blocked by inside the car. So sometimes people are trying to use the radio inside the car and they're not getting the coverage that they think they should, and it's because uh, they just need to put that antenna outside. So you want to put this on the middle of your car outside of the antenna, um, and that'll serve you well. When you go with an antenna like this, you're going to get kind of the standard coax um, or the standard um, what is it R50. Um, uh, I'll put all the lists and, and the details in the comments below. Um, but the uh, standard kind of connector. So you're going to need to have a adapter. Um, is what You're going to have to pick that up. So if you pick up a, a radio antenna of any kind, you, with the Baofeng radio in particular, you're going to need to make sure you have adapters so that you can do that. So you want to make sure you put that order in when you do it. Okay, so alternatively, too, would be something like this. It's like a Slim Jim radio antenna, which works really well if you want to use your UV5R essentially as a base station at home uh, and get a little bit more coverage. Or as what I do with this particular radio is I use it for travel. So I can set this up in a hotel room um, or off, I could throw uh, with some 550 cord, um, throw this up into a tree uh, and be able to communicate um, some some pretty good distance actually with with this um uh, so I've, I've been able to hit other town repeaters outside of towns and uh, like go to a park outside town and see how far you can uh you can hit um at the, and and these these are really effective they really kind of increase your capacity you know of course part of that uh capacity um uh, is going to be limited by the power of the radio itself uh so for five watts it's you really you, when you're looking at increasing your adaptability and functionality of radio, the cheapest thing you can do is uh, antennas. Um, so it gives you that um, that functionality. So just think about it that way. Um, and then lastly, the um, the last radio antenna that I'll talk. Oh, let me let me also mention that depending on making sure that you get the right connectors too uh, for your radio, I chose uh, this coax, kind of a standard coax. So I need to get an adapter. Um, that is uh, that looks like this, and again, I'll put the list of these adapters in below. Um, this antenna pretty much rides in my on top of my car all the time, whether I'm using it or not. This is in my travel bag pretty much all the time, um, and then also the whip antenna is is relatively handy. I use this if I need if I know I need to be communicating over long distances on foot. Um, or if I'm using, uh, you know, I, I can strap this into my, with my trap, uh, 
strap the antenna down on the on one of the straps on my chest rig um, for outdoor use, that kind of thing. Now, for um, areas like if you're inside of a building or you don't want your radio signal to go out very far, um, then you're going to want to go with a stubby. And so for, you know, being a little bit more, uh, having a lower signature, um, isolating the, the, your, the distance that your radio waves are going to be trans, uh, transmitting, having a small one can be advantageous, especially if you're trying to conceal the, that you have the radio on you as well. Having a big antenna can be very hard, very cumbersome to, to disguise. Um, and sometimes you just don't need a big antenna. Um, you're in a, you know, a, line, a good line of sight area, whatever. So if you want to increase your, your, um, the, your transmittability, you can increase it by 30% by, by using a whip antenna. If you want to decrease your transmission ability, you can use the stubby, which will decrease it by... 30% as well. I think in one of my training videos, I said 90%. That was a mistake. I don't know why I said that. Um, but I, it's not, it's 30% less. Um, so, you know, so I think that that's, uh, pretty much all that we need to say about radios, antennas. I, I did make this little PVC, um, just two caps and a little section of PVC. Um, this is actually, it not only does it hold my whip antenna just to protect it, but it also acts as a leg from one of my Yagi antennas, so it's kind of a multiple purpose. Um, and I'll do a video on that Yagi antenna in the future. Um, so, um, but I think if you're first starting out, you want to consider getting a your rubber duck antenna and your and your whip antenna first, and then get a car mounted radio antenna. Um, I think would be second, and and travel antenna, or, or vice versa, depending on um, kind of your usability, but. Really, you know, adaptability is becomes excellent, or it's important to stay adaptable with your radio communications, um, and being mindful of, of how and when you can, where you can broadcast, and uh, how far you're going to reach, and and all that kind of things. So I think you have to be constantly mindful of of that as we're as you're using your radio. So uh, I don't know if that any of that made any sense at all. If not. Put a question mark down below in the comments. Please like and subscribe, and we'll have more radio communications videos out shortly. And be sure to check the blog for um, our instructions on APRS connecting, um, our SOI um, signal operations instructions documents that you can download, all sorts of free stuff online on www.blackswanoutdoors.com. And uh, yeah, like and subscribe.